Welcome back, everyone, to the Centurion Leadership Italian Show. I'm Justin Bizarro. I'm your host. That's B I Z Z A R R O. For anyone who's out there, you can find us on Instagram at Justin Bizarro, J U S T I N B I Z A R O. That's where we reside. And if you want to listen to us, you can find us on Spotify or wherever else you grow yourself through podcasts. Today, I'm going to jump right into it. Our topic is What is a Spiritual Malady? I'm actually re-recording this because the power went out in the middle of the thing and I didn't realize it was jumping throughout the the podcast, so I literally have to re-record the whole episode, which is fun and um, a little frustrating, but I guess it's part of the topic here and um, and why am I frustrated and, and what's going on with the selfishness over my time and the inconvenience of my time and me, me, me. So it's a perfect time for a... Uh, for this conversation of spiritual malady and my frustration and stuff like that. So I'm going to first talk about how do they, if you, how do they come out? How do spiritual maladies come out? So let's identify what they are before I talk about the things that cause them. If you see a person with road rage on the street, or you see a person beeping their horn obsessively, or having, you know, being aggressive in a parking lot or mouthing off or you know, the uh, other day, the most horrible thing in, I heard happen in Pennsylvania, which was a woman was shot at a Dunkin' Donuts drive through with her 11-year-old in the sun, and the guy just walked up, opened the door, and shot her, all because of a, a little road incident. Okay, she, my understanding maybe was she was talking to her son and distracted and didn't go through the light fast enough, and the rage came out, and the spiritual malady exerted itself in violence, anger flying off the hinge constantly in a state of uncomfortability or anxiety those are symptoms alcoholism drug addiction pornography excessively social media ad nauseum these are all symptoms of spiritual maladies meaning they're not the actual ailment or disease itself that rots our soul. And why do I say spiritual? Because you can't talk about it to a doctor because it isn't something that's going to show up on a medical exam. And as leaders, as entrepreneurs, as humans in our society, we're gonna, we're, we want to contribute and we want to be a part of it, but our spiritual maladies have negative impacts. The symptoms that I'm talking about have negative impacts on our families, on our societies, on our family legacy. It, these things going unaddressed compound into generations and fuck up lives. No matter how much we bring the American dream to America, if we bring the American dream in a fucked up family pattern and spiritual maladies, you're not really going to give that person a chance at living the American dream. Okay. So what do I mean by this? Okay, let's talk about how spiritual maladies take their form. I'm going to give six. Um, actually, I'm going to give seven. I'll change it a little bit since I'm re-recording. There is a seventh um, that I wasn't going to address, but now that I'm re-recording, I've decided that maybe I'm supposed to talk about this. Maybe that's why I'm, God has put this in front of me. So I'm going to list them, then we'll go back and talk about them. I hope you have a pen and paper or you're taking mental notes because this is pretty important stuff, guys. This is probably one of the, if not the most important podcast I will ever record. I am dead serious about this. We will talk about spiritual maladies probably again. There'll probably be a part two because this topic is eroding our world, our society. And sh and want to know one of the other symptoms? Entitlement. Racism. both ways, all ways that we treat each other negatively. It's going to say both ways, verbally and physically, but I think there's a lot more than that. I think it goes beyond verbally and physically. I think we can treat each other bad spiritually. You know, we talked about name calling in the previous episode. Uh, when I call someone else names all the time and I belittle them, that's often insecurities. Those are often spiritual maladies. Okay? So let's talk about what that is. So that spiritual malady that I just mentioned is me knocking down someone else's building to make my building look taller or to make them feel as low as I feel or feel the same insecurities as I feel because I don't want to feel alone. 
because I feel no belonging, because I don't fit in, because of my spiritual maladies. That's why. It's not because you, you, you aren't meant to belong or God didn't create you to be good. It's that you're allowing your spirit to be damaged. What's a malady, ailment, disease? I once was in a relationship where someone told me spiritual maladies didn't exist and the word of malady wasn't even a word and it shouldn't be used and it doesn't really mean anything. Hmm. It's interesting, you know, which is going to be the topic that I wasn't going to bring in, but I'll mention it first. I'm going to go through the seven. I'm going to talk about seven spiritual maladies that lead to bad things, a lot of symptoms, bad things in our family, bad thing, family patterns, uh, sexual abuse, violence, alcoholism, drug addiction, uh, dis- dis- bad things in relationships that break them apart, divorces, affairs, okay, these death, murder, that all comes from spiritual maladies, guys. I hate to say it, but it's really that simple, even though it's not that simple. It's obvious, but it takes hard work to get through them. And it takes a lot of work over a lifetime to achieve excellence. And that means building character, which means dealing with our spiritual maladies or our flaws. Especially because it's not just a flaw that sits there. Spiritual maladies progress over time and they get larger. And they feed themselves by getting verification from the environment around us. Okay? That's how they grow. So here are the seven. Financial insecurity, dishonesty, comparison, negative mental attitude, selfishness, blame, and others being our higher power. Okay, the last one, I wish I had a shorter phrase, is the one I was going to leave out, but others being our higher power. Okay, so let's talk about financial insecurity. Financial insecurity takes a lot of different aspects. It could be a person with a lot of money who refuses it to be charitable, who refuses to be generous, who refuses to give her family comfort or his family comfort in hard times because the money's more important than anything else. Financial insecurity becomes where I become so focused on what I don't have or what I do have that it becomes negative in my life and in my relationships. And money is often the cause of spiritual malady. Whether we have it or don't have it, and I'm not saying not to focus on it or be profitable and take care of the people in your business, but if you're doing the right thing and you're you're doing things and you're being generous, more money will come and you will build a culture. If you're not, you will tear apart your relationships, you will tear apart your friendships, and you will tear apart the things around you. And again, I know people think when they have money that it's impossible to have financial insecurity. It actually rears its head the worst. Those who are so tight gripped, willing to not give it up, you know, scrooging it away, not being generous, not realizing that in relationships, I see this a lot, um, you know, where one par- party is so controlling over the money, yet one party's working, both parties are working to earn it, yet one person's doing all the control. It's not a boundary when you control it. And it's not two people making decisions, even though you think you're having a conversation and you make a decision on your own, that's financial insecurities, okay? And if two people have it in a relationship, it becomes very, very difficult. But often what I see is when one has it, the other one generates it, grows it, because the other one is so extreme and financial, whether it's spending it excessively, whether it's saving it excessively, either way, there's harm. You can feel in your relationship, feel the stress, If you feel financial stress all the time, I get it. There's probably not enough there, but there's also probably financial security and ways that you guys can address it or figure out ways to have your situation where the insecurity isn't there, where you're starting to save or things are starting to build up. And if you have lots of money, there's ways to still save it, but take care of your family or realize that maybe you're going through periods where you need to spend a little money or give a little more to help your family who's also in need. Just because you feel a certain way doesn't mean that we shouldn't contribute. It's so interesting to me. I will give away a dollar, two dollars, three dollars. Three dollars is my magic number, especially if I have it in in ones, to any person I see that needs money. I don't care what they're going to use it for. I don't care if they're using it for their symptom or addiction from a spiritual malady. It's It's irrelevant to me. It's irrelevant to me because I don't need the money to be my security. I want money. I want safety. I want to take care of my family. I want financial independence. 
but that doesn't mean I let it drive my bus. And too many people do. I get it. You don't want to be broke and you don't want to be on the street and you don't want to lose everything. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the obsession where you're actually causing people suffering because of it. I'm talking about that you feel insecurity, that your wealth or your ego or your character or your self-worth has everything to do with money and nothing else. Okay, it should have nothing to do with money, actually. Okay. Dishonesty. This is the craziest one because this one rears its head in a lot of ways. This one rears its head in addiction and stuff like that. People are dishonest. But anyone who's not able to be brutus, brutally honest with themselves often can't, is often dishonest. Okay. This comes from a lot of individuals growing up in hard households. The dishonesty, the having to cover up what happened in their home. And these these individuals who tend to be dishonest think they're being so blatant or so straightforward or so honest, they don't even realize that they're being dishonest with themselves, with the people with the past, which really happened in their homes, with the pain and abuse that they're causing. Like the, the dishonest thing has to do with not only do I tell white lies all the time, or I'm a parent who's like, oh, just tell Jimmy's mom you have ballet and you don't really have ballet, what are you doing? You're creating a spiritual malady in your kid, and you're leading by that example. I see that all the time, actually. I've seen it in my relationships. I've seen it in my family. Why are you doing that? Why not just tell the truth? What is so bad about the truth? I don't want to right now. I have stuff I need to do. What's wrong with that? Why do I need some excuse? Why is it okay to lie to people and that's okay? It's nice when I do it out of a kind heart and I'm dishonest, but if you do it in a negative way that I perceive negative, then shame on you and I'm going to put you on the stand. And I bet you how many relationships, personal, like with male, female, are you in where that happens? Where it's okay for me to be dishonest with my friends about why I can't go to their tea party, but fucking hell on wheels if you were dishonest about that you had McDonald's on the way home because you're embarrassed of being fat. Okay, okay, it's okay for you to be dishonest, but not for me to be dishonest. There should be no dishonesty. Both parties should be honest, but don't judge one another because I guarantee you this is the most common one. This is the most common one. And why? Because if you're in a relationship where you have someone else who's suffering from spiritual maladies, you will use dishonesty to try to comfort them and calm them down because spiritual maladies lead to emotional disasters. It leads to trying to do whatever and often if another person's trying to balance out or not go to extremes or whatever the person doesn't knee jerk react a person with spiritual maladies knee jerks that's what i'm talking about road rage all of a sudden they're lighting a fire in a house and then running into the house and screaming there's a fire that's what i'm talking about here that's dishonesty that's a spiritual malady how did the fire get started well you started it now you're yelling about it now you're a victim victimization okay I think that that's part of what we're talking about here, and I didn't list it as one of them, but it definitely is one just since I touched upon it. Comparison is suffering. When we compare ourselves to other people, we compare ourselves how much money they have. They're an al- How can they drink, but I'm an alcoholic? How, how do they have a good life, but I don't? Why do they get to have children, but I don't? This is a big spiritual malady, and we don't know. We're, we're an individual. Our lives are our own. Our actions and our and our ability to deal with spiritual maladies give us the life we want i talk about visionary threads in this podcast where the life that we want and the character that we're trying to achieve will weave the blanket of our life what our life looks like as a tapestry when it's done will determine how we use our visionary threads to weave our lives and determine the things that we have spiritual maladies do damage so comparing ourselves to our neighbor comparing ourselves to the joneses you know Whatever it is, it leads to spiritual maladies. And again, bad symptoms like addiction, anger, not the good kind. I would say rage probably because hate and anger can be good as we've talked about. What I don't hate, I tolerate. So racism would be one of them. If I don't hate it, I tolerate it. Okay, just saying. Um, Comparison. So the more I compare myself to what I have and other people don't, the more I compare, compare myself to 
or and competitive competitive in the wrong way or for the wrong reasons and not for growth that's comparison okay negative and negative mental attitude negative environment this is often gossip this is often abuse this is often a lot of different things, maybe a lot of spiritual maladies coming together, but negative environments or negative mental attitudes. Um, everything's happening to me, not for me. Everything is is bad, or I'm in an environment where someone is has spiritual maladies and aren't working on them. That can lead to your own spiritual maladies. You stop having confidence in yourself. You start being negative because how? why do I deserve this? Okay, you have a choice. You have a choice to stay in those environments or and to continue the spiritual malady or grow one. And that's up to you. That's, you know, that's what we have to decide. The next one is selfishness. I think this is leading to major ego and not humility. I think selfishness in today's society is taken on a whole other term. We have cell phones and social media and me, 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 and victimization is a form of selfishness. Okay, I know that you may have once been a victim and it may be real, but the more you do it and the more you expose it, and it's not to help people, the more you say, what about me, and what about me, and what about me? Well, you didn't even think about me. Well, you didn't get something for me. Well, what about me? Um, and what about what I've been through? You don't even consider me. Well, you're not giving any empathy to the other person, so it's going to be hard for them to give empathy to you. But that's selfishness, guys. When you choose your own way, and I see this in relationships all the time, particularly when kids leave households. Um, well, I took care of them the whole time. Now I'm only going to worry about me. And they wonder why relationships go down the tubes after kids leave the house. Because it becomes, what about me? And you didn't take care of me. And what about me, 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 And wrong answer. There's 8 billion of us on this planet. Like, I get it. We were created and each of us are in the light of God and we're meant to do something great. But we're also really not that important. Okay? We are characters in a play that has a very short time on this planet in the grand scheme of things compared to how many billions of humans have lived on this planet and are gone to how many will be gone just today. We don't get a lot of chances at this. And no matter how important or much we want to live our lives and be selfish, we don't get fulfillment out of it. And you just keep doing more and more selfish things to try to get more and more fulfillment. And you're in the spiritual malady is you're tearing apart your relationships. You're pushing the people that are closest to you to feel alone and left by themselves. Again, I talk about all these. I know that any one of these could exist in my life. Maybe each one of them have in small bits, maybe in big bits, but I can tell you that I work on them. There's principles, there's step programs, there's God, there's entrepreneur groups that are done properly like the Arate Syndicate that we look at all of these things on growing and to be whole humans, good entrepreneurs to give back to the world, to create jobs, to grow people, okay? Number six is blame. It's your fault not my fault. It's your fault always. A person that never says I'm sorry. I've been in a relationship like this. I think in this relationship I was in, in eight years, I heard the person apologize twice. Twice. And it was at the beginning to be in the relationship, which was necessary, the apology to be in the relationship because of what they did. And then after that, it never happened again. Once they got the person or they got me, there was never an apology again. There was never owning their side of the street or keeping their side of the street clean or owning their part. Sorry, I mixed up the phrases. I do that a lot. I once said, does the Pope poop in the woods? And, uh, but blame, it's always your fault. You did this. That's why I did it. Because you did that, I did this. Okay, like you're not your own person. You have to react. You can have mo emotional stability. It's your fault always that I did these things. And I swear, like, 
this in relationships, the blame thing, it is so common. It's common, especially uh, with the ma- uh, emasculation that's going on in society right now, where the blame is on the man. I hate to say it, but I'm going to talk about it. It's not totally true. People blame men, blame women, women blame men, but we have a lot of blaming going on in relationships right now, especially with this whole emasculation. You know, men are bad, uh, misogynistic freaking thing that's going on right now. Blame, blame, blame. It's man's fault. Okay. Okay. Other thing I'm going to say is history. We can't blame the people that exist today for what happened in the past. I am sorry. That's just not the way it works. We can't keep living in the past and blaming people in the present for what happened in the past. We can't go back and fix it. It's part of history. All we can do is make it better and not overshoot the mark by creating, for example, racism or genocide on the opposite direction or bad politics that ruin our lives from COVID to go into extreme where we've lost a lot of our freedoms and liberties. Come on. Really? Because a free born illness spread the planet. We think as humans, we can control it. Okay. Maybe vaccinations, maybe whatever, maybe Mm. we can fight it but we're not going to control it it's going to keep adapting we're going to keep needing new booster shots come on guys we have no control ever the moment we realize that that there are always multiple parties that everyone owns their part in this massive play or movie that is our lives that we're all characters in it and each character has influence on each other and plays a part just like in a movie then we realize that um, I can't just blame someone else. Yes, someone may walk up to me and shoot me, okay? Was I in the right situation? What did I do wrong? I talked about the woman the other day in the rage in the car. She probably did nothing wrong, okay? I don't know. Okay? Like if someone walks into school and starts shooting, I get it. We want to blame everyone. We want to blame the shooter. We want to blame whatever. But we got to look at what's really responsible. Did What was our part in our community? Could we have done better? Was that kid part of a soccer team? Or we didn't allow our kids to hang out with that kid? Or we were a part of it? I'm sorry. It doesn't just fall at the person. In our society, our influences, we put our kids in school. We, we turn over our education to them. And then we blame teachers for when they're not educated properly or we get mad or teach no the fault's yours stop being mad you want a better teacher you want a better find a better school find a better system save enough money work hard send them to private school figure out how to get scholarships blah 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 not every kid's meant to be a superstar either don't blame them when they're not doing well they're just different they're just trying to find their own way Stop blaming spouses, stop blaming family, stop blaming the past, stop blaming someone else for your actions. You don't have to react. You can actually be positive and have a positive mental attitude versus the negative one we talked about. You can be honest. You can let money not rule your life and let money be an insecurity whether you have it or don't have it. You can stop blaming other people. You can start thinking about what can I do for someone else today versus myself. I guarantee you'll be way more fulfilled if you do something for other people than yourself. Okay? And packing your schedule full of giving to people all the time and not spending time with people or using that as why doesn't the other person understand? That's still selfishness. You gotta have balance, guys. I'm sorry to say this, but you gotta be present with the people that matter. And, you know, I find that what blame honestly does is it, it blame is an excuse for someone who wants to push the person away. They've got something else going on or there's some selfishness going on. So they use blame to push the person away or to make themselves feel better or their ego feel better or whatever. They need credit for something, blah, 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 blah. Or they don't want to be seen in a negative light, which is usually the case. They blame, blame, blame because they don't want to ever take responsibility or ownership, which is a form of dishonesty. I'm not being brutally honest with myself about my part. Okay, the last one is the higher power. Individuals often suffer from this. This is, I've created a higher power. There's God, you know, but I've created a higher power that's above him. I put him before my family. 
this higher power, him or her, before my family, before my business, before God. And relationships we often get in the heavy, heavy relationships and they become our higher powers. But when that person has say over what you do, you listen to their opinions and their judgments of you over everything else. You live your life by what they tell you to do. You're often catering to them because you don't want them to have emotional issues or whatever because they have spiritual maladies and you're trying to, you know, make sure your environment is not chaotic all the time. So you allow them to be your higher power or codependent on them. Okay. And it can often lead to both parties eventually trying to be each other's higher powers because they don't want the other one reacting. And now you have one reacting to the other, to the other, to the other, and no one knows where it began. But the reality is, is it usually stems from childhood. It usually stems from that we don't address our past. I'm not saying to live in it. I'm saying to address it and grow from it. But don't blame anyone because it is what it is at this point. You can form boundaries. You can make sure you don't get hurt again. If that these people are still having these spiritual maladies or these negative symptoms that, uh, as a result of their spiritual maladies, you can choose whether or not to let them in your life or continue in your life. I get that. But they should not be your higher powers. Your relationships should not be your higher power. Your boss, your work, your job should not be your higher power. Your higher power should be God and living a life in humility like Socrates and Jesus. Okay, that's what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about spiritual maladies that in this society with instant gratification that are rotting wild. And we think that instant medicine like a booster shot is going to fix the spiritual maladies that we created during COVID. COVID took all of our spiritual maladies and shot it out of a cannon. You cut off support groups. You cut off mental health. We cut off social interaction, our friends, the people that were holding us accountable our churches, and any leader who didn't see this, I get it, human life is more important, but is human suffering also not important? I get it, I'd rather be alive and suffering than dead. Mm, It's questionable. I can pretty much tell you that if I'm suffering enough, you know, if there's been any low point in my life and I'm ultimately suffering, I don't really feel like living. Okay. So I beg to differ. I beg to, we allow the government to be our higher power. Oh, they'll take care of me. This is my favorite one. Food stamps, government assistance. Yes. When needed, it's important. Yes. To get a leg up, to get your foot feet back on the ground and grow your family, but lead by example, but you stay there, that's allowing the government to be your higher power. You're not relying on God, you're relying on the government. Sorry. Go into many churches you want, do whatever you want, do, you know, I don't care, you know, it doesn't matter, I'm not talking about any specific groups, I'm talking about all humans who do this, it doesn't matter, there are plenty of people that that do this, but you allow the government to be your higher power. Oh, the government will do it for me. I'm going to rely on the government to do... Let me give more power to the government so they become even more of a higher power in my life. Sorry. It's not really what you should be doing or we should be doing. I I hate to say it to you. But, you know, it's not an argument of that the government should come in and fix things or not. We should be able to fix things on our, on our as ourselves, as humans, in a democracy without needing the government to come in with an iron fist. And the fact that even in the United States right now that we're allowing this and so many policies and procedures and stuff to be determined for us where we really are just allowing them to just have all power and us have none. Guys, making your government the higher power leads to what happened in Nazi Germany. Ultimately, the government becomes your answer. Oh, yeah, Jews are bad. Okay, Jews are bad. The higher power told us so. But the higher power, you've got to listen to them. The higher power is giving us jobs and we're winning wars. We must be destined. Huh? See what I'm saying here? When you allow something or someone else to be your higher power, other than God, or whatever religion you are, a higher spirituality, you can't do anything. But I will tell you this. 
the number one way to battle these spiritual maladies, all seven of them, is God, is praying, is the relationship with God, is having, confessing your sins to God. And I'm not talking about like Catholic way going into a pew, but I'm, I'm talking about being brutally honest with God first. You don't need to tell anyone else right now. Tell God first. So reason and step programs is a fourth step where we have to be brutally honest and write down all the ways we harm people. Often people get into that and blame everyone else instead of looking at themselves in a fourth step. Then in the eighth step, you have to make amends to the to be willing to make amends to all where it doesn't cause harm to the individual that you're making amends to. Okay, and often this is all done through sponsors, which are like coaches. And in programs, you have your mentor. You have someone who's mentoring you and you're mentoring them in big groups because they're going through a similar situation. Now, I want to emphasize this. We use mentorship as often an up-down relationship. That's not what it is. Mentorship is on the same level. It means I'm giving to you and you're giving to me, like in friendships. I am Miami Steve. He's on Instagram. He's one of my great friends in Nashville that I've met through Airtay Syndicate. He is one of those individuals that helps me. He's brutally honest with me so that I can be brutally honest with myself and I am brutally honest with him so he can be brutally honest with himself. And we address spiritual maladies in our relationships, in our life. On a daily basis, we talk about it. You know, we talk about what's happening as we're addressing certain spiritual maladies in our life to become better entrepreneurs because we all have them. No one's immune from this. Okay, we all have flaws. We all have negativity. We all have family patterns. We all had someone telling us we weren't good enough. Or someone telling us we were the greatest thing since sliced bread, for lack of a better term. Overpraised or underpraised, it's very rare that there's balance. Okay, everyone suffers from something, some insecurity, something that becomes a spiritual malady if you let it grow. It rots your spirit. It rots your willingness to live, your willingness to give, your willingness to pursue the life that God had intended for you. It robs you from being an angel on this planet amongst the animals and taking care of our planet. Bugs, animals, the plants, the trees, the world around us. It's not easy because we have to grow and inhabit and human life is always number one over everything else in the way that we live. I get it, but actually our planet as a whole and regenerative farming and regenerative stuff like that is a way that we can battle things. The way that we eat, the way that we look at our lives, the way that we spend our money, the way that we contribute to the world, the way that we give our time. All of these things can go one direction or the other. It's how we choose to do it and it's how the people around us that we choose to do it with. So do you have a do you have a relationship with God? That's one way to deal with spiritual malady. Have brutally honest conversations with them and be willing to search endlessly about your moral and character defects and your spiritual maladies, and be honest about them. Two is have a friend, okay, or a sponsor, or a mentor, or a coach that you can confide in about these things. It doesn't necessarily need to be your relationships, because maybe going into it with a negative, or going in this might be too much for a relationship at first. Maybe it takes time for you to understand it first, before you go trying to go to your relationship and make that relationship the higher power, and now committing another problem that may give you a spiritual malady. I know I'm saying a lot here, but suffering is often comes from spiritual malady. Suffering leads to us trying to find ways to comfort ourselves that usually are quick and short and instant gratifications, but in the long run, continued over a period of time, cause massive damage in our lives. I'm going to leave everyone with this. I'm not a perfect human. But I am a a human who tries to progress, progression over perfection. I'm constantly progressing forward in a positive way, trying to address my life. And if I cannot bear or a situation is having a negative impact on me, I don't usually deal with it well. I I will literally cut it out of my life hard. If you're blaming me, you're not taking responsibility for yourself, you're negative towards me, you're verbally abusive towards me, you want to call me names, you want to blame me, you want to tell me how, what about me, 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 when all I do is worry about you, 
as an example i'm saying this not from justin bizarre i'm saying it as an example from i'm trying to get in your own heads and let me be the voice in there these aren't that's not good guys blame selfishness na- creating negative mental having a negative mental attitude which creates negative environments for those you care about around you comparing yourself always to everyone else that leads to suffering being always dishonest or even the little white lies and then money caring too much about it having it define who you are whether you're worthy or not those are all spiritual maladies guys i hope this helped i i honestly think it's probably the best podcast we've done although when i recorded before i felt i was on a better rhythm and since this is literally my well since i re-recorded i guess i'll count this as two even though it's just one being released i've recorded six episodes today uh, four for um, Justin the Food Entrepreneurs, one for Centurion Leadership Battalion, which I had to re-record, and I still have one more to go today. So I am a, I'm just trying to move forward. I'm trying to stack up and give the information. I'm addressing the audience who listens. I'm not trying to go be something I'm not. I'm not trying to go about this in a dishonest way and trying to attract all these people to it or get them to listen or become a star or whatever it is. All I'm trying to do is give back what I see is going on in the world. And I see this in the consulting I do and the friendships that I have and the relationships that I have and the people I meet in my own improvement, whether it's Arite Syndicate or it's going to church or it's being involved in helping other individuals find God and love and joy in their life or deal with their spiritual maladies because that's become a big part of my life and helping individuals grow and deal with addiction and abuse and and all the bad things that happen in life. I have seen that great leaders and entrepreneurs come out of these spaces, especially if we can model as parents a change in our spiritual maladies, getting rid of their spiritual maladies, thus eliminating our addiction or our feeling of unworthiness or our need for attention because those all come out those are all symptoms of spiritual maladies we need, we're not doing something that makes us whole or in alignment with god and who we're supposed to be so it comes out in ugly ways and it rots our souls doesn't matter if you have money or don't have money. It doesn't matter if you have resources or don't have resources. It doesn't matter if you can get to a place or not. There's online programs. There's online meetings. There's online support groups. There's online places to talk about. Stop being afraid of someone looking at you negative and start look, thinking about this. Two years from now, once you dealt with this, how much better does your life look? What about people who then look up to you and say, Mom, I'm really proud of you. That was really brave. That happens. When you deal with these things, when you become a better leader in your own life and you deal with your spiritual maladies, it is attraction, not promotion. And the praise or whatever it is, weirdly, by taking the hardest road freaking possible, comes. I know humans, we want to take the shortcuts. Our minds are always looking to improve on things and make things better. You cannot shortcut your spirit and your soul. You cannot shortcut the work that has to be done to keep it intact in a positive way and keep it aligned with God or, or your higher power or higher powers, depending on what religion you are, or your belief system. It's important. And if you're higher power and you're not religious and you don't believe in God, you should have a higher power of moral and ethical and core values more on ethical stability and and oh god high like a higher level of moral and ethics as your higher power and core values to put it simply i'm not really going to get into what i was going to say there but i'm going to refrain so i'm not try- i don't want to be judgmental of anyone and if it uh, had been on here and it sounds like i've been judgmental that has not been my intent it's not blame i'm not blaming anyone I'm just saying we all have to own our own parts. And so if you felt that I've been blamed or I've done any things on this podcast, that was not my intent. My intent was to lay it out as someone who has honestly suffered from every one of these things. We all as humans have these things. It's just how much we water them, how much attention do we give them, and then whether we recognize the symptoms when some of these spiritual maladies get out of control. No one is perfect. 
no one is like protected unless they do the work. Everyone can suffer from spiritual maladies. Everyone can, everyone will in some way, shape, or form, most likely. And they don't even realize how slippery that slope gets and how down in the dirt you get. You know, you go from the top of the hill, slide down that slope really, really fast. And next, you know, three years have gone by and you've got all these symptoms and all these problems and all this negativity and all this anger and all these relationships that are stressed. It's all because of spiritual maladies, guys. Anyone can catch a spiritual malady, just like anyone can catch positivity. It's just whether or not what we're willing to accept and what we're not willing to accept. And again, what we don't hate, we tolerate. So we need to hate our spiritual maladies. We need to fight them. We need to be angry about them, but not in a way that is self-defeating or that we're mad at ourselves. Because what I'm saying is dishonesty is something that is shared with my common brother. Anyone can suffer from it. So what I'm talking about is hating it like racism as a whole. We can fight dishonesty by going to places with people that see similar to us and growing with them. By getting into programs or groups or relating to people who are going through what we are going through. You know, I would even say George Bush, the second president, the second one. You know, I believe he had two DUIs, or at least one. I'm pretty sure that he drank non-alcoholic beer for a majority of his life. That was a symptom of a spiritual malady that most likely had to do the comparison to how great of a man his father was. I don't know for sure, but it probably came from comparison. probably came from maybe financial insecurity, even though they had a lot his father made it and he didn't. I don't know. I'm making guesses, but hey, your father's a powerful man. I've got to be a more powerful man. I've got to prove it. That's what happens. We often, as sons, when our fathers are great men, or we lead to insecurities because are we ever going to be able to be as great as they are? It's a comparison, guys, even to our own parent. So thank you, everyone, for listening in. I love you guys. Keep growing. Please send me questions. I will readdress this issue as I get it more under control and I have more work in this area. But leaders come out of hard situations. Hard times create great leaders. And if you don't go through hardship, even personal hardship, you will never be a great leader. Thank you, guys. Thank you for listening in. You can find us on Spotify or wherever else you grow yourself through podcasts. And we're out.